Welcome, movie fans, to a brand new episode of Hollow Victories. A very sexy episode, too. Mm-hmm. And the first one we have in person, it's it's Matt and Mackel actually at a table. Yeah. Um, so we got a, a fun... Uh, well, introduce yourself. I, I'm joined, as always, by my, my very sexy co-host, Mackel. Uh, didn't we already do sexy co-hosts? We did we hot, did hot we did for hot the hot last week. week. Yeah, last month. Uh, I am Mackle Shadackle 2019. <laughs> um, R.I.P. Mackle Shadackle 2019. Not good. Um, so we, we got a fun trip, double feature here. Two films from the mid-90s, 195, 196, about strippers. Um, and their various exploits. Both panned by critics upon release. Um, it's showgirls versus striptease. We got them right here on the table because I put them behind us and then we sat in front of them and I'm like, well, I guess that doesn't work because I'm used to being in the middle. So you put them on the shelves and it's fine, but we were sitting in front of them. This this shop took some time to set up. We hope you appreciate it. (laughs) Yes. I I, I have noticed about this episode. Um, just, it's just, I thought I just had is that it's going to be like the first one where we can't cut out talking over one another or... (laughs) pauses that are awkward because it's a video it'd be weird if there's just a cut in there yeah here's the this is a real how the sausage is made episode although i think i think we're gonna be a little better about it since we're in person yeah. and i can tell when you're about to talk yeah on discord there's some sometimes there's like a little bit of a delay or a cutout too so that it doesn't help especially when there's three people on the call mm-hmm. uh so, I guess we'll go ahead and start off with Showgirls, the movie about a woman who is entirely a leg. Do you want your notes? <laughs> we're, we're, now you're, here's another part of the sausage where it's just we uh, look up shit. Yeah, I, I, I usually just look up cast. I, I can come up with a plot on my own. There's your cast. Uh, Showgirls is a film about Nomi Malone. Uh, played by, uh, Miss Elizabeth Berkeley, um, known for Saved by the Bell. We'll get to that. (laughs) Uh, she, she plays Nomi Malone, a girl who has come to Vegas to be a dancer, stripper. I, was her intent to be a stripper? Uh, Because it kind of seemed like it. Her intent was definitely to find some money there, get some success. At first, she's at the casino, casino, and that's going really well for her, so she's happy. Then it goes poorly for her, and then she leaves, and her shit was stolen. And then she gets kind of stuck in the strip club. I don't think she necessarily yeah. went there for that, but she was a hooker, prostitute in her past, past life. So Yeah. Um, so she, she starts small time at a local strip club, but she catches the attention of... The lead actress in this big stripper production. It it almost seems like it's supposed to be like an art piece more than it's supposed to be a strip show. Yeah. Um, it's called Goddess. Uh, the woman's name. I'm sure it was here. Yeah. Uh, Crystal Connors, played by Gina Gershon. Crystal Connors. Um runs this show and she she sees Nomi and uh gives Nomi a chance to be in the show and from there it's it's basically about the cutthroat world of Vegas strippers um up until like the last 15 minutes where it abruptly becomes a rape revenge movie out of fucking nowhere yeah it's so weird it is <laughs> not handled well at all no no i See, Mitzi usually just joins us on the call and doesn't watch the films, but Mitzi was here with us earlier, and yeah. so they were there when we were watching the movie, and I felt really bad because I'm like, I forgot this fucking happened. I yeah. forgot there was a fucking aggressive rape late in the film. I could see how you would forget that, too, because it's like... It, it, t- it ties into nothing. It comes out of nowhere, and then it's and then the movie's the, over. The message of the movie was there before that. The only thing I think that adds... At all, arguably, uh, as an argument, um, for a movie that I hate, by the way, <laughs> uh, is that, okay, he's this big famous guy, he's kind of built up as the movie goes on. Not that much, though. Like, there's a scene at the beginning, and then there's a scene where he's introduced. Um, and it's, like, kind of just saying, like, okay, people in Hollywood can be 
just as bad, if not worse, than people in, like, this actual, like, sex industry, you know? Like, you're kind of painting it as trashy. They're kind of painting a lot of the people who work in it as bad people. And then it's saying, like, okay, you know, normal celebrity, like, well-known person. You know, even even worse person, actually. Yeah. Um. So that, there's, I guess you could argue there's something there. They could have done a much better job about going about it. They were not mature enough to do that. No. No. They were not. I... <laughs> Do, like, a, a remake of this, but, like, it, that happens, like, halfway through the film, and then it just becomes Miss 45. Yeah. Um, so, there is, there is like, a cult following to this movie. Mm-hmm. There are people who argue that this is, like, a brilliant satire. And I think part of that is the director, Paul Verhoeven, uh, known, of course, for RoboCop, Total Recall, Starship Troopers, all very, like, satirical movies, movies that go over a lot of people's heads. Um, and I enjoy those films. I'm not huge on Starship Troopers. I have my criticisms of it. But it's... Yeah, I, I get it. I get what he's trying to say with that movie. Uh, I think people are maybe giving the film a bit too much credit because it was also written by Joe Esterhaz. And I am familiar with Joe Esterhaz's other work. I've, I've even read his book. Um, mm-hmm. what, what book? Uh, f- the Devil's Guide to... Uh, the Screenwriter as God, The Devil's Guide to Screenwriting. Hmm. Um, I have a copy of it in there. I think. I think I still have it. Uh, I... I think Joe Esther has wrote this as, like, a dumb Skinamax film. Now, maybe Paul Verhoeven saw something in it and tried to make it more. Because, to be fair, like, RoboCop was just kind of written as, like, a, a silly action movie. And Paul Verhoeven took it and made it something more. Uh, so maybe he was trying to do that here, but I don't really think he succeeded. Because I, I feel like this film is so all over the place. It's so unfocused. Yeah. And and it's generally a miserable experience, if I'm being honest. I agree. And you could argue maybe that's the point. That's part of the point. It is supposed to be miserable. But here's the thing. I hate movies like that. I I hate too. I, I hate it when it's like, oh, you're not supposed to like it. Okay, I didn't. Yeah. Fuck off. So I, I, I love movies of really cynical and like was really yeah, cynical yeah, I mean, characters. Sure. I, Bojack wearing the shirt. Bojack's a pretty bad person on the show, but there's likability. There's character to it. Oh, yeah. I can't oh. follow the fucking characters in this movie. There are two characters in this movie where I didn't even necessarily like both of them. I think I understood the understood them, you know? One was uh, the main character's best friend. I under there. I don't like. I don't love that character. But there wasn't a single scene in the movie where she was a confusing character to me. She felt very clear. The other one is like there's this big woman who works at the strip club at the beginning, and she's like a lot more goofy and like she's yeah, no. she's stripping. She's, then she gets like some negative comments from people in the crowd, but she always responds with a joke and starts laughing. She was yeah, great. She, she's the house mother. She's the comic relief. She's a great character. I love yeah, her. She was the best part of the movie. I would insert. I think Crystal Connors is a character I get. Yeah. I feel like she is she embodies the movie, right? She would be a great character if not everybody else in the movie was a miserable brick. Yeah, that's the thing. Like she doesn't stand out. Everyone in this movie is a terrible person. And so she she just kind of falls in with all these other terrible people. Yeah. Where I feel like she really needed to stand out. She's a a very particularly bad person who embodies like the negative things this movie is trying to criticize i i think she is like the heart of the movie like yeah. the heart of the movie is you come to vegas and be a stripper you're gonna be crystal connors you know this is it's nomi's journey to becoming crystal connors is what the movie is i think my overall stance on this one is it's kind of like I hate it. I I mean, I really hated this one. This one's, like, bottom, very close to the bottom of the list on how I would rank these. Um, But I would, I will say this much. I do think there's more to it than a lot of the other movies we have seen. I think Mm -hmm. that it misses. I think that it doesn't do it well, but I think the intent 
you could argue the intense there. And because it's like me, you, and Mitzi watching it, it's kind of a circle jerk to some extent. Like, we all, we're pretty much on the same page with this one. There was no argument. Yeah. Uh, we did not like this movie. I would be down to listen. I don't want to shame anyone who says that they like it for a reason. I yeah. would be down to listen to someone who explain why they like it because... I can kind of see... I've heard some of the arguments, and I can kind of see where they're coming from. Yeah. But it mainly just comes down to it being a really unpleasant experience. Like, it's... It, yeah, no, it's, it's not... And it's also, if you want to you want to say, oh, yeah, that is the point. But even if it is the point, I feel like there's still things about it that are really confusing, because I don't think it understands... I don't think it understands its own characters. I think it does whatever is most convenient for the scene they're in. Not actually thinking about what the character, what a consistent character should actually do. And maybe that's just to say people aren't really consistent. Like her, the, the guy who's interested in her, what's, what's his name? James. 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 <laughs> that's funny. He... James Smith is the name of the guy who did the theme song for my show. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think, I think he's like the worst character in the entire movie because it's like at first it's like, okay, this is like one of the better guys in this Yeah, this movie. is like a sympathetic male who's like trying to to put Nomi on the, the straight and narrow and it just doesn't really work and, out for him. And maybe they're trying to make it a bit, I think but, one of you said this today, like nuance to the character, like where it's like yeah. people can be complicated, people can have good intentions but get selfish at times, but mm. it's just not explored well. You just can't yeah. put your finger on this guy. Yeah, it's like... Towards the beginning, he's like a nice guy, and then he's just a dick. Yeah. We have a character in uh, this movie who's like kind of like the good guy of the group. And I, I, he stays fucking consistent. He's It's Chad's the character's name. We'll talk about mm-hmm. striptease. Striptease has its own fucking problems. Don't take this as striptease <laughs> one. But, uh, but Chad was good, I would say, from start to finish. There was a consistent idea of what his character should be. And even if you want to say that's playing it too safe, at least there's a fucking character. At least I can f- process who this person is. Where James, no, I have no fucking idea what their intent with him was. By the end of the movie, I I guess I'm not supposed to like him. You had multiple scenes where I'm supposed to like him, but I guess just at the end, nah, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and most of, most of the characters in this film are pretty unpleasant. Yeah. And J- um, James is like the one that stands out to me because there's po- yeah like he's confusing like, yeah they don't they don't know if they want him to be unpleasant or not yeah it <laughs> it's weird because it feels like a film that very it's very deliberate in what it does but I still don't think it knows what it wants to be yeah like the, the I I don't know how to explain it really because it's it's like. It's a deliberate movie. It's a movie someone was doing. Like, nothing about this movie feels like, oh, they just fucked up. Like, this feels like the film they were trying to make. But it feels like they also didn't know what they wanted it to be. I think most of it comes from the writing. Because I will say, like, you uh, you talk about the performances, actually. Because I like the way you put uh, it when we were talking about it. Okay, so... Uh, the the lead actress here, Elizabeth Berkley, she is not a particularly good actress. Not that she's awful, but she she's a very she she's underacting, right? She she's giving a very dull performance, and everyone around her is chewing scenery. Mm-hmm. Everyone else in this film is completely hamming it up, and it it makes her stand out in a bad way. You're like. Okay, she's she's kind of reading these lines like, yeah, I like having nice tits. What a great party! I I love being <laughs> a stripper. And then and then cut to uh, Gina Gershon. She's just like wild and crazy, and she she's she is hamming it up. She and it works for her character, if I'm being yeah. honest. Yeah. But and and it, even arguably, it works for most of the characters. But then Elizabeth Berkeley stands out as, like, not a very good actress. Like, she she seems so much duller by comparison. Mm-hmm. And we should address, this is, I think, one of the early examples of, like, child star trying to, like, really push their sexuality. So, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm doing showgirls. I'm gonna get naked. Like the girl, um, spring break, spring breakers felt like that to me. Although yeah. apparently that's actually a good movie. I, People have said it's good. I like spring breakers. Spring breakers, 
I think is probably the optimal counter to Showgirls because it is trying to like be more than it is. Like it's it's a film that on the surface seems like this dumb like party movie, but it's actually like commentary yeah, on that it. those type of people. So I I think yeah, there's Spring Breakers is a great counterexample to Showgirls. I I cuz I think Spring Breakers works. But yeah, like that, like you know, Miley Cyrus's uh music awards performance, uh all that stuff. Like it it's become very common now, but I I think Elizabeth Berkley was one of the first examples of it happening where she was she was popular on the show Saved by the Bell as like a child. And now she's like, oh, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm going to show off my tits in this movie. You know what you actually do? You The best solution to being a child actor going on to your adulthood career, you just fuck off for like 30 years and come back and be in a great movie. That's what the kid from Indiana Jones 2 did. <laughs> yeah, short round. <laughs> Everything, everywhere, all the ones. He's, he's great in that. Although he, he's been in stuff since then. I mean, Has he? He was also well, in The Goonies, to be well, fair, like he was back still in the day. He was still but uh, he was in like an action movie in the late 90s. That's still 90s. That's a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, no, he, he hasn't worked in a while. He did fuck off for a long time, but... Good move. He came back He, he came, came back, back strong. He came back strong. Um, Didn't have to fuck up the rest of his life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, what a, Who else is in this? Because uh, there's... Oh, God, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin. You're right there. Is in this... And uh, uh, known for Twin Peaks, honestly, he, he's known for a lot of his collaborations with David Lynch. And honestly, if this were a David Lynch movie, I almost, like if David Lynch had directed this, I think he could take this material and make it like the movie all of its fans try to pretend it is. I think David Lynch could do well with this because it... There's maybe like a Mulholland Drive esque quality to it. It's not as weird as Mulholland Drive, but it it it, it delves in the same areas. Um, so you know, Kyle MacLachlan being in it just kind of makes me go, "Damn, I wish this was a David Lynch movie." Yeah, <laughs> you know, in terms of just talking about it as a movie, um, away from my like trying to take a more obje- uh, objectional look at it, um. I do really like... I do think it's a pretty well shot movie. I think most of the performances are fine. Like you just mentioned with Elizabeth Berkley because it's like... It is a little bit over the top, but it works in a movie like this. Like mm-hmm. how they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it. It feels like it fits the tone, but you're right. The main character kind of <laughs> Yeah, the main character... The, she should be hamming it up more than anyone. I will say, though, with that being said, it wasn't like horrible. It was just kind of, you know bland and generic there wasn't anything special about it um yeah. but I, there wasn't like a point in this movie where i was like oh my god this fucking sucks with the performances you know they were just uh, kind of they varied from like fine to generic um i do think it's a well shot movie i think it's a well lit movie not like amazing it's not like that oh it, it makes the movie worth watching i would not recommend this no. to anyone um but it was clearly the people who made it were competent yeah um, no and it, I, I mean, it's Paul Verhoeven, you know, he made Robocop. Mm-hmm. I could believe that there were people on this project that were trying to make something. I just think that there was, I think it m- mainly comes down to the writing. I think that the writing is so bad that like, no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't make it work. Like a director can only do so much. Sometimes a director just has to accept that a script is no good. Yeah. Um, and they did not with this one. Well, um, maybe I, like, previous to this, uh, Verhoeven and Esther Has had worked on Basic Instinct. Um, just, which, uh, here's the thing. That's like a, a sexy movie. Like, like uh, Sharon Stone's character in that is supposed to be this like femme fatale. And it, it works for that movie. The Like the sex stuff. This I feel like a lot of it is just a flimsy excuse to have a bunch of tits in the movie like even 
you can say, oh, well, there's a message, it's a smart movie, and it's like, nah, I think it's mostly an excuse to just put tits on screen. I think, for Joe Esther has, for Joe Esther has, I think it was mostly an excuse to put tits on screen. It's done an unnecessary amount, although sometimes it's really fucking funny. <laughs> the pool scene yeah. it was genuinely, like, the most enjoyment I got of the movie, because it's just, like, it's just fucking flopping around in the pool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the other hand of this, uh... Because a lot of a lot of people think this is like kind of a good movie. A lot of people also think this is like a hilarious, so bad it's good movie. And Most I, of it's not. That I seems... would disagree. There are really funny scenes. That yeah. scene where she's like in the pool, just <laughs> I'm gonna show. I'm not gonna show I'm... this movie to people, but I am gonna show that scene <laughs> to people. Uh, I don't, there's a lot of like weird flopping in this movie. They they go to like a dance club early on, and they're just yeah. Everybody do the flop. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> For other 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 like that would be like dances you'd be seeing like in a comedy like Hot Rod or something <laughs> like that where it's just yeah for for a movie where there's so much dance and and some of the dance sequences are really good you know yeah. like the the whole uh, goddess show that she's in it's a well made show so but then you have stuff like that there was one scene in the movie one of the dance scenes which does have a lot of lewd stuff in it you do see a lot of tits that's not inherent just to be clear that's not inherently a bad thing that can be no. you can do it you can do it tastefully um, and you can do it like yeah. or or even if you're not doing it super no, tastefully you can do it with like meaning you know yeah no there's a lot of movies with like excessive nudity that i love or you can just make a porn if you want to make a porn there's nothing wrong with that either but if you're gonna try to make this big art house movie, I don't know. Like it seems like there's like a, a, there's two things trying to clash and they both hurt one another. Yeah, it doesn't work that great as a porno because there's all this dialogue shit in the middle of it. Yeah. It doesn't work that great as a movie because it doesn't feel it, like a movie that, a lot that's, of the time. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, I feel like Joe Esther has wrote like a Skinamax flick, and Paul Verhoeven was trying to make an art house film. Yeah, and it does not. I think that's the best way to explain it. I think that's, like, the way Which, I've been trying to explain it. I mean, it, it, it it's interesting. I'll give it that much. It is interesting that they did that. Yeah. But it, the, the end product is delirious and unfocused and not very pleasant, apart from some, like, really funny moments. I like the, the oh, you like having big tits scene as well. <laughs> Um, there's some, there is some good dialogue. I, I've said, uh, everybody got AIDS and shit before. <laughs> the line, okay, the scene in that movie, this movie that I kind of like, I can kind of appreciate, because it feels like there was a genuine setup for it, I thought that it was well shot, and the dance sequence was good, is the scene right before she pushes her down the steps. Yeah. There's a dance between the two, and I thought it was choreographed pretty well, I thought it was shot pretty well, and... I feel like there's actually a point to it because it isn't just, oh, more sexy dancing. Like, the two are kind of, like, battling each other while also making it seem like a natural show. And I think both the characters pull it off. Like, I could be a member of that audience and think that everything that's happening in that dance scene is natural. It's supposed to be there. Um, when there is some real tension between the two at this point. And I think that scene did it well. And that leading directly into the scene where she has pushed down the steps, I think that also works well for the story they're trying to tell. And that leading into the hospital scene at the end, I also think that works. It's just there's so much shit in the movie that doesn't work that it's hard to give credit to those scenes because it doesn't, it does, mm -hmm. it feels like the idea is there, but it's not recogn fully recognized throughout most of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you like turn more in frame? <laughs> You're, you're leaning out a little. You, you, you haven't gone all lot. the way out, but you're, like, touching the edge over there. And I'm like, uh, come, bring it in. <laughs> Let the people see your pretty face. Um. Jeez. Is there anything uh, else to say about this one? Well, it was... It was one of the first movies to get an NC-17 rating. The NC-17 was new in the 90s. And it was the very long. It's it's still no, it's still around. People yeah. still people still make. I guess I just don't hear of NC seventeen. Yeah, that's the time. thing. Like, there, there's so many awkward like rules that the MPAA has about NC seventeen movies, and a lot of theaters just won't play NC seventeen movies. So, if if you get an NC seventeen, you're better off just releasing it unrated. Yeah. Um. 
but th- this was one of the like first films to get like major distribution with the NC-17 on it and it kind of hurt its reputation right out the gate I think I think, I think that like pretty big movie of, like The Hangover got a unrated release I think I well okay yeah, unrated release is different that there's like the unrated versions of movies yeah but, uh, like, in theaters that probably didn't have everything that the yeah. unrated DVD had. Yeah, no, I'm talking about, like, this is like independent films that aren't going to play that many theaters anyway. They usually just go uncut. Excuse me, uh, unrated. Can I also just comment on one thing? How fucking goofy this <laughs> DVD cover is. Yeah, I joked about it. Yeah, it's just, like, on, like, one hand... I, like, I can see what the thought process is, but on the other hand, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I would no. also, like, say no. You you glance at it and you're like, okay, so she's a leg? She's she's a long leg? <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, it stands out if you want to give it, if you want to give it anything. It's not, you know, this is as generic as you get. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, you want to see Demi Moore naked? Okay, this is a movie about Demi Moore naked. Yeah. Um... I mean, people probably rented it for that alone. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I mean, both of these are products of, like, the the 90s era where if you wanted to rent porn, you had to go into, like, the separate part of the video store. So Mm -hmm. then you you put out something like Showgirls or Striptease, and it's like, no, this is a movie. This isn't porn. But, you know, people were renting it just to, you know, have a little fun. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um. Uh, anything else to say about Showgirls? I fucking hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you... I don't. I don't hate it. I think it has enough humorous moments that I. I there's now, parts I like, but it's too far and few between. It's, and the parts that I hate, I really don't. Yeah, like. no. It, it's definitely digging for gold. If you like but... the movie, leave a comment. Be a link, be comment. I'll read it. I'll consider what you say. Yeah, uh, I'm not, not here to dismiss people who like it, but I really hated it. I will say, kind of like with a Book of Henry, it's like one where I feel like it's not. Ah, I can't give it that because it's selling sex. You know, it's still like I was gonna say, like it, it feels like it could be someone's like project, like they actually care about. I don't know if I can I, say that. With I think shows. I think Verhoeven cared about it. Yeah. Uh, maybe him and him alone, but Verhoeven cared about it. Like, there's an appreciation for it, like, not being, like... like yeah, no, it's a unique film. Garfield like, is a... Garfield is a failed product, you know? Right. It, it would have been easier to make a Garfield movie work. Um, because the source material's there, and they just decided not to listen to it. They made a bad product. And then stuff like Book of Henry, or if you want to say Showgirls, Showgirls is something that isn't really the same thing, but again, the difference being is there's still something in there that... We, we just talked about it with why someone would, would rent striptease, you know? But Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, there are movies that advertise themselves this way that are good, so maybe that's not too fair to say. Yeah. No, there's, there's good movies that have excessive, like, sex in them. I yeah. love Short Bus. Have you seen Short Bus? I've heard that- of it. Yeah, but it it has like real actual sex in the movie. Yeah, um, like unsimulated sex. But it's a it's a brilliant film. Like it works. <laughs> I mean, there's some really like there's a lo- there's movies with like, tons of that that I like. I mean, Titan was one recently. Um, a lot of really graphic uh, graphics. Like some of them are uncomfortable actually, but it works. It like it enhances the scene how uncomfortable you are. Um, and I love that movie. That's my favorite movie from last year. Uh, so it works. Yeah. yeah. No, you you just gonna make, make a good movie. It's uh, the, we're not prudes here. We're not. Oh, you made a movie all about sex. It's like you keep it, your shirt on. I, I I feel like they need to pick a lane. Is this an art house film or is this a Skinamax film? Yeah. And it it doesn't work as either. In all, in my opinion, I agree. I think it's a uh, think it's poopy diarrhea. No, I, I I get people who like it though. Like the first off, there's like a lot of really funny moments. There's a lot of good dialogue, and it's it's a unique film. And sometimes that's enough for some people. Yeah, I I feel like it's kind of the same argument people make about Freddy Got Fingered. 
You know? I can see that. Maybe <laughs> maybe for this show. That has potential. We might do that. Uh, oh, we could talk about this during strip trees, but there is an actress. Oh, we should talk about her right now. Yeah, because okay, of the actually, uh, yeah, uh, so, I almost forgot about that. Ren- Rena Ripple, who is now Rena in the Ripple. run-in, she's not in the lead, but she was in... She played she's, a in, character. she's in both of these movies. I think she was like an actual stripper because she plays a stripper in a lot of stuff. Mm. She was in Married with Children as a stripper. Um, I, there's a lot of movies where she's credited as like hot woman. Um, oh, I clicked on her like like her picture and I like looked at her movies and like there was stuff in there. She had um, what was the movie I told you she was on? She was on um. She was in, like, it was a pretty, like, big movie, too. It was Batman Returns. Batman Returns. Batman Returns. Okay. Um, um, maybe as a stripper. <laughs> um, but she I, was... She was in Mulholland Drive. I mentioned that one earlier. But they were, like, posters that were clearly... They looked like they could be posters for porn. Like, either it's yeah. porn or it's in the showgirls realm. <laughs> but, um... But, yeah. Uh, yeah so, not, not, yeah, she... Wrong with that, necessarily. There, in, there is a sequel to this film. It was written and directed by her. Yeah. It has, like three or four of the actors from the original James comes back. Um, and I think... My favorite. I think the strip club owner from, like, the beginning comes back. Also, oh. also, uh, Ford Austin, the director of Dahmer vs. Gacy, who I did an interview with, uh, is in that movie. Oh, yeah. So, Showgirls 2, written and directed by... The, the girl who plays Penny in this movie. It's about Penny. It's called Penny's from Heaven. Can I talk about that strip club owner for a second? I forgot about this completely. He's like such a fucking asshole in the movie. He's like, if you if you don't suck my dick within the first week, you're fired. Like, that's the kind of person he is. And then at the end, they're trying to make him sympathetic. They're trying to make him like, oh, it used to work for us, kid. It wasn't like, uh, like it's basically like making you feel nostalgic for the time she worked for this asshole instead of this asshole. <laughs> Like, the music is clearly implying that you're supposed to like him in this scene. Um, yeah. It, it, no. That was, that was, that, that made me laugh. That's actually something that was, like, so stupid it made me fucking laugh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, that, that's, a, that's, like, them, they're trying to make him more human, and I can appreciate, like, making a bad person more human, but you got, if you're gonna do that, you need to spend more time on him and you need to not, like, make him that shitty in the only other, like, one of the only other scenes he's in. Because he's not in a lot of this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, the actress who played Penny wrote and directed a sequel, Showgirls 2, Penny's from Heaven, because apparently the sequel rights to this movie were, like, crazy cheap. Like, she just... She just asked around, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you can you can make a sequel, sure." Yeah. <laughs> here's here's the sequel rights to it. It's that because it came out like twenty sixteen, I think. What's a good like parallel to that? Like like say like uh oh we're making a sequel to uh Boogie Nights, and it focuses all on John C. Riley's character. You know, it's like it's like yeah, she has enough significance in the movie to where you could remember her character, but she's not that big of a part of it. Making the movie about James would make more sense. Making the movie about you know, um, what's her name? Gina, like Gina played her. Uh, yeah. What's her, what's the character's name again? Uh, uh, um, Crystal. Con- Crystal Connors. Uh, making the movie about Crystal would make more sense. Um, Penny like is really a small bit. Like, she's kind of like the new girl at the club and um, there's a little bit of sympathy for her in that scene because she's getting yeah. herself into something that you know, she's basically too innocent for. Yeah. And then there's the scenes with, like, James kind of being shitty to her and all that. Like, there's, yeah. like, you you can see her, you can remember her, but she's, like, maybe in, like, ten minutes of the movie total. Yeah, no, she's an odd character to focus a sequel on. <laughs> Especially because it was written and directed by the actress who played her. There's an episode of Nathan for You where he's trying to, like, get access to his school, but he can't, so he, like, says that they're filming a movie. To get access to the school, the high school he's trying to get into. And he says, like, oh, yeah, it's a sequel to... I don't remember what the name of the movie is. I'm just going to name a, a, ran, like, a random movie because I can't remember it. But it was like, oh, it's like a sequel to Rush Hour who focuses on this character because they were able to get one actor who was in it. It was a guy who was in the background of a shot for five <laughs> seconds. And he convinced him that he was going to be the, the star of the sequel to this movie. And obviously it was... like I, I, Again, I named a random movie. I don't remember which movie it was. 
Um, I'll, I'll, I'll send Matt a message. Maybe he can do an edit on the screen right here. Whoa. Whoa. It if was that there. movie. It was that movie. If, if, if it's there. I'll remember uh, it. Uh, don't get lazy, Matt. <laughs> Let's don't the audio before you upload it. Um, uh, that's all I have about Showgirls. Do you like to move we on? We had a good conversation about Showgirls. I, uh, it's it's an interesting movie to talk about. Yeah. It it might be on like the list of movies that are more interesting to talk about than actually watch. Yeah. This movie. One last thing. This movie is too long. It's a two hours and ten minutes. If this movie were like an hour forty, I think I would find it a lot more tolerable. Yeah. I guarantee you, we're like. There's movies on the show that we bring up a lot that we've talked about in the past. I guarantee you Showgirls is going to be one of those. It's going to oh. be one that we don't forget about. <laughs> it's for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, let's talk about... Let's talk about Striptease in this corner. So, Striptease is a movie that was released in 1995, the year of my birth. Uh, yeah, I think it was 96. Wait, what the fuck? I'm looking at Showgirls again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showgirls was 95. Yeah, shit. <laughs> 1996 director is and uh, directed by Andrew Bergman. Uh, it stars Demi Moore and Burt Reynolds is probably the most other. I didn't, person. I didn't look. What else did he direct? Um, I don't know. All right, just keep talking. Tell us about <laughs> it. Tell us about the movie. It's a movie. Actually, give uh, me your phone. <laughs> I'll look it up. Uh, there you go. Um, it's a movie about. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. I don't know why I cut this out. <laughs> Tell us about the plot of Striptease. So the plot of Striptease, it's about a woman who used to work for the FBI, but her husband, um, because of something shitty her husband did, she is losing, like, they're getting a divorce, and she's losing the custody of her child to her husband, who is someone who steals wheelchairs. <laughs> he goes to the hospitals and steals, like, they're just trying to show that this husband is, like, the sleaziest and shittiest person ever. Um, so he steals wheelchairs from a hospital because that's a, that's, that's, a, that offends you, right, Matt? It offends me. Um, and they go to, so she, yeah, she's losing custody of her kid. She's in a really bad position. She got fired by the FBI because of this whole ordeal. And now she has to work in a strip club, which is not helping her get her daughter back. Um, and you meet, you know, she's working in the strip club while trying to get custody back, while trying to deal for shitty husband. But then there is a congressman played by Burt Reynolds, who's honestly a very entertaining character in this movie. Um, definitely belongs in a comedy. Uh, <laughs> him and his like part, like his like secretary guy. Uh, I forget what the, his like official title would be, but he's like yeah. the one who's constantly getting like, oh, you gotta stop fucking doing this shit, man. Um, he shows up at the strip club one night, makes a complete ass of himself. They try to get him out of there before anyone notices him, but he's noticed. But he falls in love with Demi Moore. Like, he, he sees her dance, and it's just like, he for him, it's like love at first sight. He's like a fucking psychopath. He has to get with this woman. Um, so he starts trying to, like, find out who she is and whatnot. Um, meanwhile, there's other characters who have, like, this picture of him doing, like, act, making an ass of himself his night, trying to ruin his public image, or, you know, to gain something. Like, they can do blackmail. One of the guys is trying to do it for Demi Moore. So... Yeah. What's the character's name again? Uh, I can look I that up right now. We'll call her uh, Aaron. 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 So she's trying. They're trying to do it. So like Aaron, like he's trying to do it just as a favor for Aaron because he's also in love with Aaron. Oh, uh, Demi Moore's character. I, I thought yeah, you were talking about the guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name. He's very. He's in a very short period of the movie, yeah. and he gets killed basically because he's trying to. You know, he's trying to. <laughs> blackmail a congressman <laughs> yeah and uh, there's other characters in the movie that do this too Shad even has a connection to one of them there's a character named Shad who's a Chad <laughs> and he uh uh and he's like working with one of that like working with one of them to try to get something out of it but that guy gets killed too um yeah. they basically so um, it's, a, it's a really messy situation meanwhile there is a uh detective that's trying to figure this stuff out and he's talking to Aaron a lot and trying to, you know, see what she knows and try to, you know, get to the end of things. It's a lot more, it's a way, really goofy movie in, in comparison to Showgirls. It's like, it's very well, silly. And it, it's, it has a lot of comedic moments. Uh, where where Showgirls, I was mostly only laughing at stuff that I probably wasn't supposed to be laughing at. Striptease has a lot of actually funny moments. Yeah. Uh, 
Both Burt Reynolds and Ving Rhames character are very funny in this movie. Yeah. It's it, honestly there's other characters. I mean, I think Shad's really funny sometimes. I think That's that, Ving Rhames. Oh, I thought you were saying like him and his partner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, and I like the husband too by the end of it because he like <laughs> oh, yeah. they just make him fucking stupid. At first, it's like just like he just seems like a real scumbag, and it's not even funny. It's just sad. Uh, um, Robert Patrick, yeah. the the T one thousand, but and like I I knew I recognized him. I saw his face, but what I'm like the T one thousand. I'm like. Yeah, that's him, but also he looks completely different. Yeah, he's like he has a, like all this facial hair and he looks like a drunk guy constantly. Yeah, he's, a, he's a redhead in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um it's like watching Bo Bur- uh Bill Burr in Breaking Bad versus him in the stand up, you know? Like it's just like who the fuck what the fuck? Um but <laughs> uh no, but it's like me and Matt kind of said this by the end of the movie, it starts off very straightforward. Like you almost feel like you're getting something kind of similar to striptease. Um, just this is striptease. Just I mean, showgirls minus like the, you know, the art house shit. But it's a lot way more straightforward story. But by the end of it, it's like, it's like you're watching the movie Clue. It's like a comedy. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no, like it it has like sitcom shenanigans by the end. I feel like they hit this point where they're making this and they realized how fucking boring and bland the movie they made where it was. So they just decide to make it a comedy at the end because the la- final scene of the movie is full of one-liners. It's full. It has the fuck the the fucking enemies get stuck in a pile of sugar. That's how they're defeated, and it's because the drunk husband is trying to get a coffee and he pushes a button because they're in a sugar factory that covers them in sugar. He says, "Hey, I said no sugar," and it's just <laughs> that part felt like it was from like. A children's comedy, yeah, like the villains. Ryan Ryan last night. Yeah, yeah, the villains, Ryan. The villains get trapped by a pile of sugar. Yeah, that could happen on the Disney Channel. Right. It. I would have liked the movie if the movie was like it was the last twenty minutes the entire time. I actually think I would have liked this movie, but most of it is really boring. Uh, uh, yeah. But there's characters in it that I like. Like I like Shad start to finish because. He's not, like, an amazing character. It's, like, he's an amazing comp- character in comparison to who we normally talk about on Hollow Victories. I, I think he's a charming character. It's, I mean, it's Ving Rhames. Yeah. He's, he, a, he's a cool guy. He, he, what, what's likable about him is he says that he's there to protect the girls. Like, you know, he's just there for them. Like, yeah, no, something. he's... And he's consistent. Yeah, he's just that. There's not a scene where he has to be a real piece of shit or... Yeah, no, he's, he's a cool commentary. guy. He, he he doesn't like look down on the girls. He doesn't. He he's in fact very supportive of them. Yeah, someone calls him a stripper. They he says, "Hey, they're dancers." You yeah, know? he's he's a very polite dude, and he he genuinely is useful. Like, there's a scene where she's in her car, where, like her husband has a switchblade to her, and he comes in and he fixes the problem. Yeah, no, he's he's a good character. He's got a lot of funny lines. I think Erin isn't, like, an amazing protagonist, but she is much better than Elizabeth Berkley. Yeah, than Nomi. Well, uh, she's consistent enough, you know? There, there, there's yeah. a, she's generic, and but she's fine. I, I do think there are, these movies are going for very different things, because Demi Moore is, like, stripper with the heart of gold. She just wants her kid back. Where yeah. no, This is very much the story of Nomi's corruption. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people would say they like Showgirls more than Striptease, because Striptease is like, at the end of the day, it's a very generic movie. Like, it's not really doing anything all that special. While Showgirls, it's like there's an effort there, but I just think it misses the mark so much. But for someone who does get something out of Showgirls, like, I think the, you, you described it really when we were watching the movies, because you said there's like, there are people who really hate Showgirls, but there is an audience that really loves it. Well, Striptease, yeah. nobody really likes Striptease. Yeah, no, this, this this is a movie that's going to be divisive, but there will be people who like it. Anyone who watches Striptease is probably going to come down on, on the same page. They're going to be like, okay, this is like a mildly comedic, but ultimately very generic story. This is a, a woman trying to get her child back from her abusive husband and... The lengths she will go to. The husband's so weird because it just seems like the type of character that you want to see dead throughout most of it because of how <laughs> awful he is. But by the end of it, it's just like he's just a goofball. It's yeah, like, and he kind of he kind of even helps by the end. Yeah, I like he's he's like more um, likable by the end of the movie than he is by the start. Yeah, uh, you and I were even talking about this. Like, it seems like Demi Moore had a plan to like 
kidnap the the governor and like uh uh bring him to justice, get him to admit to murdering the people he did, or, or putting the hit out on the people he did. Um, and her husband shows up, and that just seems like a stroke of luck. Yeah. And it seems like this plan could have worked if he hadn't shown up, because so many movies will do the thing where it's like, oh, I've got a plan, but then, like, some random thing they hadn't accounted for happens, and without that, the plan does not work. In this, I think the plan would have worked even if he hadn't shown up. It's just kind of lucky that he did. I think there might be some boomers that like this movie. <laughs> if they watched it. When we say no one would like it. Because, like, Burt Reynolds is in it. And Burt Reynolds is funny well, in it. Yeah. Burt Reynolds is, it's, he looks weird about his mustache, but Burt Reynolds is really funny in this movie. Right. And it feels like he belongs in a different movie. But to give props to him, I don't think he's phoning it in completely. He's really into the character. He's, yeah. like, really acting like a creep. And I, I did think it was funny that throughout the movie, anytime he was giving a speech, he was always talking about family values. I'm all about family values. Meanwhile, he's, like, going to strip clubs and talking about how he hates his wife. Why does Lip Hibbin, it's like his assistant, because his assistant keeps telling him, like, yo, do this. And the scene that finally just makes him say, I fucking quit. As he walks in, he's dressed as a cowboy covered in Vaseline. And he's just like, why? <laughs> and that's like, but that's like good self-awareness, you know? Like, that's yeah. like, that's like a, that's genuinely a funny dynamic between those two. Yes. But there's funny, and like, he quits, and he actually quits. Like, he doesn't come, you don't see him again after that. <laughs> And that's funny. That's funny. The only issue is there's not enough. It, just like with Showgirls, even though there's like a scene or two I like in that movie, it's far and few between. Same thing with this movie, the scenes that make me laugh. They're more frequent, for sure. But there is I, I too even, many gaps where I'm not enjoying myself. I wouldn't even say they're far between, because most of them are right there at the end. Yeah. Like the, the finale of this movie is much more enjoyable than, like, the first hour. The more you start to focus on Burt Reynolds, Shad, and the drunken husband, the more yeah. morphing <laughs> Yeah, no, he's not even drunk. He he takes yeah. a shitload of wolf morphine. <laughs> and he's, like, it's passing out. Never we mentioned in the last episode that Fred Figglehorn's mom was going to be in this movie, and she is. She's the sister. Yeah, with the yeah wolf she's morphine. his sister. And... It could easily be the same character she plays in Fred the Movie. Yeah, if Fred the Movie was, like, rated... We'll even say PG-13, it could have been right. <laughs> yeah, very similar characters, although she's not in much of the film. Mm. Um, there Quick were two scenes. There were other actors in this I wanted to talk about. Arena Ripple, again, doing very little in this one. Yeah, uh, she's, she's one of the dancers, along with... Uh, fuck. Uh, Other way. What was her name? Pandora Peaks. Miss Pandora Peaks, a, a very much a porno actress. Mm -hmm. Although uh, she is in the Andy Sidaris classic "Do or Die," um, Andy Sidaris very much known for making the films that it's not porn; it's an action movie. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot um, to mention Zach and Cody actor was in <laughs> yeah. Showgirls. Uh, well, one of the guys from Zach and Cody was in Showgirls. One of the He's like a waitress. Yeah, waiters. Um, Flamboyant character. He has glasses. G Gianni Russo is the uh, detective. Um, okay character. I mean, not like amazing, yeah. but like, you know, he's sympathetic enough with the main character. You won't hate him. Yeah, no, he's, he's an interesting character. I liked him. Uh, best known for playing Gotti. In the film Gotti that was made before the John Travolta yeah. film Gotti. <laughs> yeah. There were... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Could we do that as a pair-up? John Travolta's Gotti... I don't know how bad his Gotti is. If it, if but I really want to do Gotti in it. The, the John Travolta Gotti. If his episode. Gotti is poorly received, I'd say that it, it'd be, Gotti versus Gotti would be a funny episode. So what you were going to say? I was going to say... Um, what was I going to say? I'm Shit. We were talking about the actors. If that we, helps. We were. I was... Uh, oh, man. I completely... I don't think anyone does a bad oh, job in this movie. I was gonna... Okay, I think our, it was kind of changing the topic a little bit. I think at the end of the day, I am bored for out too much of 
strip tease to really no, like it. This is not like a recommendation. This but... isn't this isn't a book of Henry or Serenity where it, or you know where, it, where it's like oh even though it's bad I like it. Um, it's it could, with a little bit more of the aspects I like though it could be there is parts where it's like yeah this yeah. this could have been something entertaining. Um, it's not, I, I consider it mainly inoffensive. I don't think it's like, like showgirls where they have that rape scene near the end that just yeah. like feels really inappropriate, which you can make a movie about these topics, but you have to treat them with respect. Um, um, with, uh, show, but like at the same time, yeah, it, basically what I was saying is like, it's, it's not going to be one of the ones I really like, but it was, um, I, I will say Rotten Tomatoes gave it 13%. I don't see that either. I think that's too low. I think that we no, have watched no. far at, worse things on the show with higher ratings. Yeah, at the risk of tipping my hand too far on this one, I don't think Striptease is a bad movie. Um, I don't Showgirls think, very much is. Yeah, I don't think it's a bad movie either. I don't think it's a good movie. It's, and, it's, it's, it's average. And yeah. where while Showgirls has far more nudity in it. I honestly think Striptease is a sexier movie. <laughs> I think like, yeah, I, most of the sex scenes in this one, you could get off too easier than Showgirls. <laughs> and you could argue maybe that's the point with Showgirls. It's trying to show like the grosser side of this. But I like, agree. I agree with that. It's a w- <laughs> Yeah, I... I- <laughs> I know what you're talking about exactly is the sad thing. Um, because, like, it is, like, unsettling. I, I don't like... There's so many shots in Showgirls that are just gross to me. Yeah. I, I feel like Striptease is the movie you want to watch if you're just looking for some nudity. Yeah. There's more nudity in Showgirls, but it's better in Striptease. It's like, this is where the arguments can come in with sh- uh, Showgirls being a better movie because they can say it's being risky, it's doing more. And I agree that it's a riskier <laughs> movie, but it, it like here's the thing, that, that doesn't inherently make something better. Yeah. Um, you, can, you can maybe respect it more just for being non-traditional because this movie certainly has a lot of cliches in it. This movie certainly has a lot more yeah. traditional film tropes in it, but it's more enjoyable. I, I think... Something I feel like I've said before several times on this show, I don't think Striptease hits the highs Showgirls does, but it doesn't come near the lows either. Yeah. Like, Striptease is a very middle-of-the-road movie where Showgirls is all over the fucking place. Showgirls has one character I like in it. Striptease has, like, maybe five or six, where, you know, that's... I Characters are my favorite things about a movie. Favorite thing about a movie, so... yeah. Yeah. So you you want to talk about intent? You want to talk about artistic intent? Uh, go ahead. I'll listen to you, but you're probably not going to sway me. Like you can make a movie about like bad characters, like characters yeah. who who are bad people, right? And Bojack Horseman is a great example. Uh, uh, that's a show, but you know I'm a big fan of like very bad things and in the company of men these are movies about really shitty people breaking bad one of my favorite shows of all time almost every character on that shows a bad person yeah but here's the thing i feel like they know those characters are bad where showgirls it's like a crapshoot and i think maybe that's why i like gina gershon's character so much is cuz the movie clearly knows she's the bad guy yeah Right, where you don't really get that with some of the other characters and, and then, in the film. And then when the movie acknowledges that, you're willing to give it more credit. You're able to like think of, like, okay, maybe it's a little bit nuanced. Maybe now that you're seeing like all these other characters and what they're going through, you say, okay, maybe at one point she wasn't such a shitty person. Maybe this industry yeah, no. ruined her. Yeah, that, that's, and that's what makes it interesting. Yeah. It, you can sympathize with a character like Bojack. You can sympathize with a character like um, Crystal. It, it, that, it, like, it, that's the thing. If you cut like 90% of this movie and then just focused on like know me and uh crystal's dynamic it'd be a much better movie yeah like cut cut cut, the best scenes cut james entirely he doesn't need to be in there Uh, cut the the strip scenes down significantly put chad in it because he'll have some charm (laughs) get rid of the fucking rape revenge subplot that comes out of fucking nowhere if you want to make a movie about that then make a movie about that (laughs) don't fucking add it in in the last like we were 
we were at the end. There was like less than 20 minutes left. Yeah, no, there's plenty of movies that do that better. You know, this is not Miss 45. This is not I Spit on Your Grave. This is not Savage Streets. It's Showgirls. And we're already well past the point that you can add that in. And again, I think that there is a point to it, but it, the point isn't strong enough to justify doing that. Because the point is just to show, like, yeah, a normal celebrity yeah, can be just as bad. I, I feel like if maybe there were there was, like... And they didn't give them too much credit. Maybe that's not the point. Maybe they didn't think about that. Maybe if there was dialogue that he had, like, abused some woman off screen... Then, the, then you would kind of get, oh, you know, he's a shitty person yeah. too, even though he's in yeah. what people would consider the more legitimate industry. That's a industry. really good point. They could just make it, it could be a line and that would like make someone think about it. Like, yeah. I would have, I would have respected it a lot more, even if it was just yeah. like a little, like, it doesn't like, be a full on rape scene. Yeah. It's just like. I, I'm thinking he, about like uh, what they did with. Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, how he, like, murdered his wife. Yeah. But that's not, like, a big thing that comes up, really. Yeah, and it's up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is such a dick with that thing. <laughs> I love that movie, though. Um, so, <laughs> is it obvious which one wins? Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm voting striptease. I assume you are, too. Victory sound. No, um, I like Showgirls more. <laughs> No. Uh, I I checked the uh, poll last night, and it was 60-40 for Showgirls, um, but it also only had 10 votes, which I think is the fewest votes we've got. I, I saw that too. I didn't I didn't look uh, at the winner. I didn't look at the winner, but I saw the votes, and that was that was pretty low. Do you um, think most people just said nah? Yeah, I I feel like not a I, I feel like not very many people have seen striptease. Yeah. Um, maybe not a lot of them have even seen Showgirls, even though it's more infamous. Showgirls I learned about through Sardonicast, because not only did they do an episode on it, but it got like pretty continuously mentioned on that show. Like, it came back yeah. up multiple times. Apparently there's an extended cut that might come out of Showgirls, which... I, I, just, I don't want an extended cut, I want a shorter cut. Yeah. Um, although I, 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 I'd be interested in it longer cut just to just see to what's see. in it i might like um, peek. i might like look at i wouldn't watch the whole movie again but i might skip to the scenes but just to yeah see. find out find out what was cut yeah just um, it's, it is you're right it's an interesting movie can i, can I say one more funny thing about this sure. we're at like a dvd like you had showgirls already we went to like yes. a dvd store during our visit and just found strip keys <laughs> yeah i mean I, I bought this from that exact same store yeah um uh I found out about Showgirls because of the Razzies. Um, this one Worst Picture of the Year, and then the next year, this one Worst Picture of the Year. Really? They were both up for Worst Picture of the Decade. I don't know how you can call that Worst Picture. 90, yeah, I, I'm on. sure I'm sure I've seen a worse movie from 1996. Yeah. Like, I can't think of anything. Was that the year Godzilla came out? I think Godzilla was 98. This is like... This is like a four or five out of ten for me. That's yeah, no, that's I, a that's this, a two out of ten because like, I do think it's well shot. I can't take away everything from it. It's not a one, but it's a two. This yeah. is like a four or a five. Yeah, if if it weren't for the uh, like all the nudity in it, it would almost feel like a TV movie. Yeah, like that's the type of plot a TV movie would have. I I like good characters, and that movie has some goofy, fun characters to watch. You just don't get a. It, some of them take a while to get to that point. Like the uh, the, the you know the drunk and abusive husband. He's not. He's not entertaining until the end. Um, yeah. But uh, but he gets there. Um. But like yeah, like, but you know Burt Re Burt Reynolds. He like I said before, he did a good job. He was fun. Like, Burt Reynolds is like one of those actors. Yeah. We mentioned Norm Macdonald in the last episode yeah. where he's just like. He's just normally entertaining, even if yeah. it's not a good movie. And, although it, it does definitely bring up comparisons to uh, Boogie Nights, which came out two years after these. And I feel like Boogie Nights does a lot of what these movies are trying to do a thousand times better. Oh, oh that movie is wonderful, Bo Boogie Nights. <laughs> but like, yeah, Boogie Nights is like the culmination of all these Skinamax flicks from, from the 90s. I I wonder if Burt Reynolds ever said how he felt about striptease because he hated Boogie Nights. <laughs> like, what if he was just like, striptease is the movie it should have been. That's the real one. <laughs> uh, striptease wins. We already announced that. 
Uh, so, uh, next time on Hollow Victories... I've never opened so many drinks. That's episode. fine. I opened one, too. I did it first. <laughs> um, next episode, we are visiting, uh, some fil- bad film adaptations of YA fantasy novels. I know that doesn't narrow it down at all, but I'm, I'm going with the two I think were the biggest. It's... Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief versus Aragorn. And we will be joined by my friend Peyton, who has a, a very specific reason for being in this episode. What's that reason? Uh, he has spoken with Rick Rorden. He, is, he has met Rick Rorden. You've told me this. He, he, he had a whole interview with him. Nice. I'll, I'll let Peyton talk more about it next time. Hell yeah. Peyton, next episode. Um, anything else? Uh, it was fun doing a live action episode. It was, it was fun doing a live action episode. And this was a good one for it, I think. Yeah. Um, maybe we could have done Rob Schneider for the live action episode. That might have been fun, I, but... I think we had more material on this one. Oh, uh, for the sure. The animal for had, like, nothing to say about... <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was our shortest episode. <laughs> Even shorter than the time we watched two 40-minute TV specials. Even shorter when um, we talked about, like, movies for five-year-olds. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was very little to say about those films. We had a lot to say about showgirls and striptease, and to be fair, there's a lot to cover with these movies. So, uh, we we got a good bit of uh, material out of this. I better end the episode because Michael's playing with my tchotchkes now. <laughs> uh, until next time, for my co-host Movie Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. Have a nice day. Peace.